Hey guys, welcome back. This is Shadow Coast with Shadow Coast Gaming, and we are playing Gladius Relics of War. And we are working on our Imperial Guard. Very hard, large map, fast research campaign. In this episode, I will outline my strategy for Imperial Guard. Um, I will call this the early game strategy. I am not saying it is the best, I'm still learning. As some of you might have seen, my Space Marine campaign did end in disaster. I'm by no means an expert, but I'll outline what I'm doing and hopefully that'll help you decide how you want to play your game. Please subscribe, obviously please post. I'm always open to constructive criticism, so if you think I can improve or have better recommendations, please share that on posts and I will be happy to update additional videos to incorporate that feedback. So Imperial Guard. They might seem weak and puny, but one thing they can do is build big, badass war machines. Excuse my language. The Lehman Rust Battle Tank is one of my all-time favorite units in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, especially among video games. We also have the Hydra, which is an anti-air, and then the Basilisk, which is our artillery, which has extreme long range. So we can pummel them from afar. So let's get into it. We're going to start in a very... Um, Kind of, I guess we'll work our way across the top left of the screen over to the right, down, and then back over to kind of cover the full gamut of what I think will be important to, um, you know, important concepts to think about, understand as you are playing the Imperial Guard. Off the bat, let's go through the different resources. We have food, ore, energy, research, and influence. All five are important and all five have to be managed very closely to be successful. So let's start off the bat, food. How do we get food and what does it do? We get food by building Soylent's farms. For those of you who uh, know Soylent, I'm assuming that this might have been one of the many reasons or names on how it was named. Um, long story short, it's a building that harvests food, doesn't taste very good, might be filling nutrition and easy to grow in great bats, but as, food, but as a food stuff, it has some drawbacks. First, it's utterly bland and flavorless, very similar to Soylent, the beverage that supposedly gives you everything you need. Second, it looks like green gloop. Third, it's made from any available organic matter. Persistent rumor has it that human corpses are not excluded. That is absolutely disgusting, but it does serve as the backbone of sustenance for our Imperial Guard army. Now, why is it important? Long story short, it is used to build our mainstay and backbone, or I guess the frontline infantry units, guardsmen, heavy weapon squads, bulgrins, um, you know, which will be important. Now, the Imperial Guard, they might be weak, but they're easy, cheap, and fast to produce, and they can take a decent hit. 23 hit points, not bad. They have very poor armor though, so they can't get eaten alive, right? And that's why you can see we have a ton of them. We have guards units alone, one, two, three, four, off the bat, and they are basically there to do a little damage, throw some grenades, but mainly absorb damage while our tanks and other heavy or more powerful units take out the enemy. Next on the list, or what is it used for? Well, you can probably all guess, it is used to produce the mainstay of our military and our damage dealing mechanical units. Sentinels, Hydras, Basilisks, Lehman Rust Battle Tanks, and my all time favorite that I am dil diligently working towards, the Bane Blade, which will become the backbone of my strategy late game. Now you can see here, units are expensive, 60 ore for the upkeep. 45 or 3 to upkeep, 30 or 2 to upkeep, 30 or 2 to upkeep. So none of these units are cheap and that is one of the reasons why we want to produce in our core strategy a bunch of infantry to stand between us and our armored units so we keep them safe. They take forever. Now I am building a bunch of stuff here so this might not be the fair or best comparison but you can see here that um, Imperial Guard take, it says seven here. Now on average, if you're only building them, it'll cost three turns, I wanna say. Uh, and then for the Lehman Rust, it could take up to 13 turns. Um, 
which is a very long time for those of you who are playing the game. So we want to use these infantry and keep them between us and our tanks. Next to energy, very simply, energy is fairly consistent through many of the uh, campaigns and factions. Effectively, it determines the number of buildings we can build. Each one takes energy. One thing I would note that's unique, or I believe is unique to the Imperial Guard, is a tech priest engine seers um, who do require energy to produce. Engine seers do a few core pieces. They are used to found new cities. We can pop up a bunch of cities all around the map. Um, I don't know if there's a cap. I don't believe there is, which is fantastic. Although it does take time, energy, and resources to develop those cities. Um, and then the second piece they can do, and we're going to see this up here, is they can also build a Imperial Bastion. Basically, it's like the Fortress of Redemption, except, in my opinion, more badass, because I like the Imperial Guard. Um, this will be a mainstay of our strategy. We are effectively going to have multiple cities producing multiple units to crank it out to make sure that we can keep pace and keep churning out infantry fodder and some of these higher, higher tech, better armored units, as well as supercharge our economy to make sure that we are able to consistently keep producing these units as the enemy throws themselves at us. We will also consistently be building engine seers and dropping tons and tons of bastions to slow the enemy down, absorb damage as we use our artillery and higher tiered units, right? And we'll also use these as defense or posturing, right? Now, I am playing this game in what I like to call a kind of a siege mechanic mindset where I'm going to go super late game, I'm going to let them come to us, keep repelling them until I can get a wall of Bane Blades to literally crush them where they stand. All right, next research, simply put, that unlocks the research, it determines the speed. I will be honest with you, one of the things that I'm learning in this game is that I am not scaling my research fast enough. We are on tech tier 3. Um, I'm pretty sure the Space Marines here have Storm Talons, which is a much higher tech tier, so they are much quicker or, you know, quickly progressing through their tiers, getting higher tiered units. Right now, I'm basically picking the two best things that I think I can get that are going to be pertinent in my medium to late game to get me to the Bane Blade. Then I will go back and really fill in a lot of the good stuff that I, I missed. Um, again, that's the mainstay of my strategy. Next is influence. Influence is used in a variety of manners. The most pertinent to us is the Shrine of Aquila producing hero units, Lord Commissars. You can also research, which I will be doing eventually, tank commanders that help boost allied tank units. We're definitely going to want um, one or two of those um, in our army, especially as we build a wall of Bane Blades, which is our end game strategy. All right, so we've talked about the different resources. Let's talk about how we move our units early game. When you first start off, you're probably going to be producing three to five um, guard units. It's okay to have more. They're cheap, easy, and expendable. The way I move them is close together. I like to have supporting fire, and the first thing that I did was actually work to rush a Lord Commissar. Right To produce a Lord Commissar, we do need our um, Shrine of Aquila which is researched, and I'll go through re research in more detail in Tier 1. So I believe the first thing that I got was frag grenades for anti-infantry. So there are a bunch of Groot Hounds ro roaming around. I wanted to be able to repel them. Then I got the Shrine of Aquila and pumped out a Lord Commissar to be our main tank or frontline unit while the guards um, grouped together and shot them and threw grenades. Now, I, you can see here, I would argue that I'm into early, mid game time frame. I'm nowhere near late game, right? The first unit that I got, mechanized unit that I got, which is the easiest to get, is the Hydra. I then quickly researched the Basilisk to do long range fire support, working my way up to the Lehman Russ. I think that's a good strategy. Quite frankly, if we weren't playing on very hard and resource management wasn't crushing me, I would have two at least two hydras if not three and i would again go with at least two um 
basilisk. Now, I would produce more if I could support it, but these units cost a lot, take a long time to produce, and very important to note, they are very easy to kill um, if they are ranged. So the Lehman Russ is a frontline unit 58, which is nice, 32, 30, 30. So they have pretty good, you know, decent armor, decent hit points, but quite frankly, they will get shredded if they're ranged. So let's take a look at research. How do you progress? What do you recommend? I, if I'm being honest, I do recommend getting these three really early. Quite frankly, I think if I'm remembering correctly, I got these three off the bat. Frag grenade is the first thing that I recommend you research. Getting the frag grenade um, in the guard is important because those crude hounds can tear your guardsmen to pieces. But if they have a frag grenade, they can sometimes one-shot them depending on their level, uh, which is very nice. Next, Shrine of Aquila. Aquila, if you get that, you can pump out a Lord Commissar, use him as your kind of frontline tank unit doing damage, which is very nice and getting experience. Next, manufacture them. This is going to produce your ground vehicles. You can produce, produce a Hydra once you build this. Um, very important. Next, honestly, what I would recommend is, and what I did was, I think I got um, the Crack Grenade, Meta Pack, and Cult Mechanicus. Then I moved up here, then I came back to have block to expand um, my building count. If I'm being honest with you, and I could do it over again, um, I honestly, I, I do think you need the Crack Grenade. Am, uh, is it Ambles? I think they're Ambles. Um, as well as Kachikin Devils. You really want this crack grenade to, to do it. So I got this. This was the first thing I got in tier two, and I used it to devastating effect on Kachikin Devils and Ambles. I believe that's what they're called. I personally love the Medi Pack. I, I try to keep my units alive. I gain attachment to them for better or worse. So I moved them back and healed. Um, if you're gonna forgo one, you might consider the Meta Pack, but you know you might pay for that later. And then you're definitely going to want to get the hab block. Um, I waited and came back to the Mechanicus uh, until later. I do think you want to get it probably, at, you know, after you have filled out tier five and you are able to build the Imperial Bastion. You definitely want to come back and get the Mechanicus uh, called Mechanicus, and that allows you to build Tech Priest Engine Seers, which allows you to found another city as well as put down these Bastions. Um, Imperial Bastions, which we're going to want. Okay, Tier 3. I went with Heavy Weapon Squad and Hydras, and I lied to you before. You need to research Hydras before you can produce them. The only unit you can produce after you get the Manufactorium up, and I do recommend you get one of these if you can afford it, is the Scout Sentinel. So I do apologize, I did misspeak there that I'm looking at this. These two, now, all of these are fantastic. Um, engine like tech priest can boost the damage of vehicles i'm gonna grab that like what this is one turn i am gonna grab it uh buildings that you know increases loyalty that's okay and tank commander i'm definitely gonna get uh, i do think i might get ergonomic surge at some point later game two it's really up to you guys i decided to go with these two because after this point i was like i really need to get to the bane blade all right, so let's talk about tier four. Highly recommend basilisks and hotshot power packs. It's up to you in the order. I got the labor core um, to, you know, new building that generates influence. And if I'm not mistaken, if we look at the labor core, one of the reasons I really want to build one here is to increase my production rate because it is taking forever to produce things. So I'm going to throw one or two of these down. It is expensive. 60, 60 ore is crazy. But in the long run, it's going to speed up my production of units, especially those Bane Blades that I want to build late game. So I got it early. If I'm being honest with you, I would wait and get it later. Tier 5, I got Imperial Bastion, Lehman Russ. All of this stuff is fantastic. Um, but quite frankly... I want to get the Bane Blade, so 
up to you. You can pick any. You could pick other two. I would highly recommend Imperial Bastion. Basically, we're playing siege mechanics, pushing out a little bit at a time, dropping a bastion, dropping a city, to help us defend and keep our borders secured. Now, Bulgrins are awesome, and camo, you know, in general. I wanted to get one just to see and play with one. Um, honestly, I do think it'll give us a little more staying power on that front line as a melee infantry unit. Um, so I recommend getting them. I also like camo nading. Grants range damage reduction to ground vehicles. We want to keep those vehicles alive. If we do our job right, we have a few, several infantry units in front of it. So they will be susceptible to more range damage, especially from the Necrons. I think this is going to play a huge role in the game. Now when I look at tier 7, um, I I'm personally going to get Brute Shield to help my Volgrins uh, and Void Port to get space, uh, or excuse me, to get aircraft. It would be nice to get a Smoke, smoke Launcher to re further reduce damage and then obviously, um, you know, all of these are really good. Dozer Blades. Um, and, uh, extra armor, but I'm going to come back to those. So I'm going to get Brute Shield and Void, Void Port. If I don't get Brute Shield, then I'll probably get extra vehicle armor or Dozer Blade, just to make sure I can move my units the way I want to move them. These two, Dozer Blade and extra vehicle armor, are going to be key priority after I get my Blame Beam Blade, um, just so you guys know. Now... I will get additional heavy bolters to enhance my Bane Blades and Lehman Russ battle tanks. And, um, what was it? It was, yes, the Thunderbolt. There we go. Um, fast and heavy fighter unit. It'd be good to get some air superiority. Uh, and then here... I do plan on getting the Marauder Bomber and um, Sky Strike Missiles so our Thunderbolts can uh, really light up the sky. Then finally I'm going to get a Bane Blade, Bane Blade, Blade Last Cannons um, and Quite frankly, all of these, but the first two will be Bane Blade, then immediately Bane Blade last cannons. I do plan on coming back and making sure I get extra vehicle armor as well as dozer blades. So that's research. That's my current strategy, my current thought process. Please post. I'm open to suggestions. I will be playing a fair amount of this. And that's my advice on how to play the Imperial Guard. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe. Check out my campaign. Please post. I am by no means an expert. Looking forward to learning, and thank you for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it. Catch you in the next episode. Shadow Coast out.